Hey, cheers. Clink. Tea cheers. What kind of tea do you got going on over there? London Fog. Mm, delicious. Shout out to Traditional Medicinals. I used to live right down the street from them. I love this company. This is their throat coat tea. Delicious. It's got yummy licorice and all kinds of good things in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. One of, one of Carly's uh, go-tos when she's not feeling well. Yeah, it's, it's just yummy. I drink it just about every morning. Ever since moving to a spot where it's just epically cold, this stuff does the trick. It's me going every morning. I'm grateful. So thank you, traditional medicinals. I would love to drink more of your tea. So if you'd like to send some, <laughs> <laughs> happy to drink it on air for you. <laughs> Mine comes from Art of Tea, which is in LA. Oh. All handcrafted. Very nice. Artisanal teas. Yes. Fancy very, tea. Yeah. Very nice. Fun. I buy them in these huge pouches and they ship them to me. Good stuff. Well, hey, today... Check it out. We're going to talk about the truth about online marketing. And this is something that I've wanted to talk about for a little while, because for those of you who don't know that have been listening to the podcast for a while now, Rory and I are not just business owners, but in fact, we really excel at online marketing. That is like our happy place. We love to talk about all this online marketing, how we can continue to level up and help our clients grow and help our own businesses grow and the podcast grow and all that. So I feel like we are very much up to date on what is current and happening in the online marketing world, but there's a lot of stuff about the online marketing world that's pretty gross too, right? I mean, we've encountered some just like, just some, (laughs) (laughs) you know what I mean? We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff that's just ripping the bandaid off as we like to do for all of you. We're going to talk about what you need to know before hiring a marketing agency. We're going to talk about the shady underground of like all these people who call themselves the marketing gurus and the harsh realities of social media marketing, because there's a lot. And I can speak to that wholeheartedly. Like I was a social media marketer for years. I still do a little of it in my marketing agency, but I've passed that on to other people who know it better than I do now so that I can focus on providing you quality content for the podcast. (laughs) But You mean focus on the big picture? Yes. Focus on the big picture. Thank you. Exactly. But there's so many things that you'll hear from a lot of the gurus, quote, unquote, for those of you not watching this on YouTube, which you should be. Watch this on YouTube. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to just cover in this episode that I feel like is so important so you can make the right decisions in your own business. If you're either looking to hire a marketing agency or if you're considering starting a digital marketing agency and just the things that you need to know. I've been marketing online for well over 20 years now. Mm-hmm. I've seen everything mm-hmm. uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, all, I've seen all the scams. I've seen what works, what doesn't. I've seen the everything behind the scenes that you would not believe. I've heard about things like people who present themselves one way and then they are not that way. And you would not believe it. And now I'm not going to call out people because that's not what we're here to do. What we do. Um, Yeah. What we're here to do is to make you aware of the tactics and the strategies that they use Mm -hmm. so that you can be aware of what they're doing so that they cannot manipulate you anymore. Yeah. Especially being in this day and age, unfortunately, we are still during the COVID, like we're still in COVID right now. And there's so much distrust, like now more than ever. And so there's a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself to protect yourself. And we have to really ask ourselves, like, who has the answers, you know, to all of this? So, yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) So something that I want to mention here is gurus, all right? Really prey upon people who are looking for instant results. And I'm going to tell you right now, Instant results and online marketing don't mix. They just don't. Online marketing is a long game. And it's not to say that you could post something and have it go viral the next day, but that's very few and far between. Like your content is highly unlikely to go viral. Okay. So it's amazing how things are being sold online. And Rory, I'm sure you see this all the time, just even in our news feeds on our own social media pages, like on Facebook, I'll see like sign up today, $10,000 in your first week. And I just crack up. And then I feel sad because there's people that are falling for that. Mm -hmm. 
And what they do is they say, hey, you know, download my free guide. And there's nothing wrong with offering free information. Okay. I want to say that straight up, but what they do is they say, download my free guide. And then they upsell you and they say, okay, well buy my $37 product and you'll earn, you know, $10,000 mm-hmm. next week. Mm-hmm. And it's this whole kind of bait and switch thing. Yeah. Wow. It's like true clickbait, but they've hooked you in a different way. Right. Yeah. And it's sad. It's sad to watch that go down especially right now, especially when people are just so desperate to like reinvent themselves and do something new and grasp on to what these influencers are offering, right? It just feels really inauthentic and it sucks. It sucks to watch it. And there are people out there who can actually help people get results. But like you were saying right at the (laughs) the beginning here, getting results online takes time. Building a business takes time. (sighs) One of the things I want you to think about, okay, the foundation of online marketing came from uh, direct sales and direct sales always was very much about how do we get people to take an action right now? And it it was this, like, you've got to purchase now mentality. Mm -hmm. And how do we market to this mass amount of people and get a small number of them to take action? Mm Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. transition to online and that whole process just went online and that was how it was done. Now, things have, have started shifting. Some of that stuff still works, but it's it was very over the top because it had to get you very emotional, make you get a, make a decision right away. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're selling something that is very low ticket, meaning $10, $20, $30 type of thing, you have to focus on going from an ad to that initial sale very quickly. Like that's what they're doing. But when you are playing a longer game with your business and you have higher ticket products, you can't just go, you know, buy my uh, $50,000 coaching program <laughs> right now. Right. It's a process. Yeah. It's a exactly. process. It's, it's a trust building, right? Yeah. There's if a you, lot if that you goes try into those that. same tactics, it's not going to work. Yeah, absolutely. Now, and the other thing to think about is if you're building a real business, like think about buying a franchise. Now, the we're not even going to say the number one franchise out there, which I don't even remember what the number one franchise, but let's just say it's a McDonald's or or something like that, which are you know millions of dollars to buy into. But the number ninety nine franchise to buy into is a Jiffy Lube, as I looked this up a few weeks ago. <laughs> And it's it's still about a hundred thousand dollars to buy into the franchise, and then you've got to buy, uh, you've got to go and rent a building, uh, you've got to be, you've got to get approved for you know credit to run the business, mm-hmm. you've got to hire staff, you've got to buy equipment for that business, uh, you've got to buy supplies, you've got to put together your marketing systems, you've got to have a business plan that's going to support you for uh, three to five years, right. You think about all these things, you've got an investment to put in. A lot of times what people do is they go and think that they can just put together an online business and in three weeks say, I'm going to make $10,000. Well, if like a real business person is investing hundreds of thousands of dollars into a franchise with a return of looking at getting a return in three to five years on their investment, what makes you think that you're smarter than someone who has like extensive business knowledge, has made very wise business decisions, that you're just going to hop online and make a lot more money than them. I think that's the common misconception, right? It's like people who are new to this game think, you know what? I've got a hundred grand. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in Facebook ads. A lot of people really think that. They think they're going to get an epic return on that. You know? No, well, most people don't even have a hundred grand. They go, I've got a hundred dollars. Right. I'm going to drop it on Facebook ads and that's all they have. And they don't even realize you can't even test your Facebook ads for a hundred dollars yeah. these days. Real quick, because you mentioned franchises. I just have to share the list. According to Google, number one, McDonald's. Number two, oh, I was right. <laughs> you were right. I know you were right. Number two, KFC. Three is Burger King. Four, 7-Eleven. Five, Domino's. Six, Ace Hardware Corporation. Seven, Century 21. Wow, that seems surprising. Eight, 
Papa John's, nine Taco Bell, and coming in at number 10. Any guesses? It's a pizza company. Another pizza company? It is. Yep. Domino's? No, good guess, though. No, it's Pizza Hut. Ah. Isn't that interesting? I I would have guessed maybe two of those. That's, yeah, wow. If you're looking to get into a franchise and you got some cash. But anyways. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's big money to drop into these franchises. Oh, and then you have, yeah. to pay, you have to pay franchise fees every year. Not you only have... the fees, but you have to abide by their branding, by their mm-hmm. their super strict regimen of like what goes into everything you do. You've got to look at the product aspect of it. I have a, a very close friend of mine that is a, a Mako franchisee. And that's like body work, auto body work. And he does very well. He's in the Sacramento area and he does extremely well. Like they've won tons of awards, but getting into that position, it's taken like 20 years to get to where he is today. And it's so regimented what he can do, what he can't do. In fact, I'd love to have him on the podcast. It'd be really fascinating to talk to him just because of what that looks like, what it means to be a franchisee, you know, super fascinating stuff. I'll reach out to him. I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Was that just a top 10 list or was it the top that 100? Was- that was just the top 10 list. Uh, I have more. You want to hear more? No. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. No, I, had to- I had found the top 100 because I wanted to, to find something that was approachable. Like, mm. okay, most people aren't, when you're looking at a franchise, you go, okay, well, I'm probably not going to choose the top one or two because that's such a high investment. What was the top, you know, something that was like top 100? And 99 was a Jiffy Lube on the list that I had found. So now that we've had our witty banter about franchises, because we love to tangify, as y'all know, let's talk about what you need to know before hiring a marketing agency. And this applies for online marketing as well as brick and mortar. Okay. We've got a list for you here that's so important to pay attention to. All right. Number one. First and foremost, you guys, this is so important. You get what you pay for with a marketing agency. If you think for a second that you can go online and hire someone that you never talk to on the phone, you never talk to via Zoom or in person, there's a reason, okay? Like it's so important. If someone's going to be in charge of your brand, if someone's going to be in charge of representing you and your business, oh my gosh, it needs to be a little personal, right, Rory? Absolutely. I mean, we both own marketing agencies, so we know the ins and outs of it. If someone posts a link up on a website and is like, hey, you know, you can run Facebook ads, we'll run your Facebook ads and we just charge you $50 a month, run them, you know, no, (laughs) doesn't work like that because there's so much that goes into it. There's a lot of communication. There's a lot of back and forth. There's, uh, there's so much more than just send us a few images and we'll post your ads. Okay. So you have to understand that that's number one. Okay. So you get what you pay for, meaning that if you're not willing to invest in quality people, you're not ready to work with a quality agency. Oh, that's a great way to say it. You're not ready. You're not at that stage. And that brings us to number two is you have to know what you want out of the relationship or what your expectations are with working with an online or brick and mortar marketing agency, right? You have to know what is it that you actually want? Because what I have found in my own agency is people come to me and say, the board told me we needed new marketing. Okay. (laughs) What does that mean exactly? (laughs) That's so blanket. What do you mean? Like, what's, what did you try? That's not working. Let's look at everything. Let's look at the brand. Let's dig really deep here. But it's amazing how many business owners just are so consumed with the day-to-day operations that they forget that there's a lot of other elements that come into play here where it can actually make it so that you're not working as hard for the dollar, right? There's so many things you can do from a marketing standpoint, from a branding standpoint, where the dollars start coming in and you're not having to work as hard or be consumed with the day-to-day operations, right? So it's amazing how I get that blanket comment a lot. I see that. I, I get things like, especially in the book agency where it's like, I, just, I want to be a bestseller, right? Okay. <laughs> but it's like, what to what end? Mm. Where's it leading in your business? You know, these are some of the questions, you know, or I want to, I want to make more money. That's a common one, right? Mm-hmm. 
It's like, how do we get there? What are the steps? What's the process? What are you looking to accomplish? Are you wanting more one-on-one clients? Are you wanting to sell more of your course? Are you wanting to do live events? Are Mm -hmm. you wanting group coaching? Like there's so many different aspects to this. And most people have not thought this stuff out. Or they just haven't been introduced to it, right? And, and so that's where that we too. come in. Yeah. Just say, hey, here's the options. Yeah. I feel like yeah. this whole we podcast. That. This whole, yeah. Yeah. I feel like this whole podcast should have been called like the big strategy <laughs> because that's in large part <laughs> of what we do, right? Like the big picture, of course, is important, but you have to take these necessary steps to get to the big picture before you even know what that looks like, right? And I'm so grateful that both Roy and I are in this position with so many individuals, we've been blessed where people come to us and say, I don't know, what do we do? And we get to just strategize and come up with these wonderful ideas for these people that they hopefully put in action. Right. And in large part that helps them just select what's next for them in their business. And so when you go through the process of selecting the correct marketing agencies or agency, you need to ask yourself, like, what's next for me? Is this a good fit? Does this company align with my company morals, with where I'm going, with where the compass is? You know, like there's so many things you have to ask yourself. It's not just, oh, great. They're going to run these ads. I can sleep well tonight. Values are huge. Do your values align with the agency Mm -hmm. you are hiring? Mm -hmm. It's a big question you need to ask yourself. Yeah. I mentioned this in a previous episode, but I started my marketing agency because I got taken for a ride from a previous one with my first company, right? Like without getting into too many details, I got my money taken from me, like my last dollar and the company was nowhere to be found. And I was just left with nothing, right? Just my money gone. So I had to figure it out and build it up and seek out the proper tools that I needed to get to the next level. And then, you know, Rory happened and here we are, (laughs) (laughs) but really it's amazing how many different steps you have to take and the thought process for yourself as a business owner and an entrepreneur to really dig deep and say, what do I want out of this? Because all marketing agencies and plans are not the same. So you have to decide that for yourself. What's next? What does that look like? So set the expectation for yourself and A big part of this too is how much do you as the business owner, how much do you want to be involved in this process? If you want to be totally hands-off, that's one thing. If you want to be hands-on, that's another. So, you know, a lot of questions there for yourself. Right. And I'll just, I'll bring that back to uh, like working on a book because that's a, it's a very tangible concept to wrap your head around. Some of our clients want ghost writing, right? So they want mostly Mm hands-off, like go write, have our team of writers go write the book and let me just approve everything. Which other is fine. people want yeah. a lot of back and forth. They want to be really involved. And then other people want to just go off and write the book and just want the editing and the feedback. Like, are we on the right track? Mm-hmm. And, you know, do we have the concept right type of stuff? Yeah. yeah. Everyone's different. Right. Everyone's different. And, you know, we all have different personalities and what we're and different things that we're looking to accomplish in our businesses. Oh, yeah. Good agency owners are going to be able to adapt and work with you based mm-hmm. on, you know, what you're looking to accomplish, you know, or they'll be, or they'll just flat out say, we do this and we don't do that and be straight with you. Which is great. Yeah. I love companies like that where they're like, hey, here's the three things we do and that's it. I love that. I love when I see that because when you get too many options, it's kind of like when you walk into an Italian restaurant, right? And you sit down, you're like, are these ingredients fresh? Because there's a million options. I was was reading this article and it was all about these top chefs. And they were like, they were talking about like what they look for when they go into restaurants, Mm. right? And they said, if there are too many specials on the menu, don't order anything from the special menu. Oh, no, it means they need to get rid of it. They're like, <laughs> because they're it's just gonna trying go to get bad. rid of all of the bad food that <laughs> is going to go bad, like all the food that's going to go bad. <laughs> that's funny. See, I didn't even know that, but my mind thinks that I'm like, if it's a special, that means that is about to go sour and I don't want yeah, anything. They said there should be that. one or two items only as a special. That's what makes it special. <laughs> yeah, not 10. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sound <laughs> advice. That just saved so many people from food poisoning. <laughs> right. <laughs> so another thing about what you need to know before hiring a marketing agency is 
ask for previous client testimonials or current. You can do that. You can say, hey, I would love to see some reviews, some testimonials, ask. And if they're like, we don't have any, maybe move on. Unless if they have a really good reason why, unless if there's like a confidentiality situation, or maybe you've heard about this company from, you know, a close friend who had good experience with them. There's a lot of reasons why a company might have like not so solid reviews. Like, for example, I'm a great example of this. I have super, super strict. I mean, Rory knows this, like beyond strict confidentiality agreements with my clients. Some are celebrities. Even more so than me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've worked with a few celebrities and I've worked with people like very high up in the tech industry where I am not allowed to even speak about who these people are, what their business is about, which sucks for me because when people come to me, like, can I see your testimonials? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I have to pause and go, let me look through my NDAs, my non-disclosure agreements, because I don't have a ton of reviews. You go to Rory's website and it's like, mind blown. <laughs> this guy has <laughs> testimonials like from here to next Wednesday. It's amazing. But we find workarounds around that. Yeah. But also like, don't, you know, if someone is just like, you know, just getting started and they're like, Hey, you know, I'm looking to build up my portfolio, you know, and you want to give them a shot. That's fine. Yeah. You know, and they may say, you know, free or a discounted rate. That's fine. You have to know that going in, that's the situation. You may not get any results. It may be a wash. Yeah. Okay. That is your choice and your decision. If you're, and if you're in that stage in your business, that might be where you're the pool of people you're pulling from. Yeah. When you're looking at top level agencies, most likely you're going to, if in, in a case like with, like with Dominica, you may actually have to get on the phone and call people. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to see testimonials on the website. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And I'm blessed enough to be in that position where I've worked super hard. Rory said he's been in this for 20 years. I've been doing this for 12, 12, 12 going on 80 feels like, right. But it's amazing that I'm blessed enough where I can get on the phone with people and close really quickly because I'm able to speak about certain aspects of my job. But again, it's the confidentiality situation that, but it also goes both ways is that our clients know that when they need that level of confidentiality, Mm -hmm that we respect it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that one factor has actually gotten me more clients than not, right? People know like, okay, great. What's fascinating to me is that high-level executives, they don't want to share with anyone, in, in my experience, right? This is just me speaking here with my business. They don't want other people to know that they're getting help. They don't want others to know that they need something else to help the cause or to help the business grow or whatever it looks like. And that's fair. They want right? to be seen as the savior of their company. Totally. They don't want anyone to know that they need the outside person to come in and save them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. That's part of their imaging of what they're presenting to the world. You know, and I, I've been in that position of having to do that for other people as well. Mm-hmm. And I can't talk about some of those situations, but I have had an, because I've been doing this long enough, I have enough people that I've worked with that. I've been able to balance that out mm-hmm. and I've consciously chose some clients where mm-hmm. I knew I did I, and, and yeah. took them on where I knew that I, I could build case studies and success stories where that wouldn't be a factor. Yeah. Unfortunately for me, I keep, I'm like in this, in this, <laughs> you're in ne- this cycle. I am. I'm in this cycle of never ending where people have like these alter egos, not in a bad way, but it's like an alter ego where I can't refer to them as like their actual name. Like they have, you know, well, be, these, because of the referral cycle too. That's it. Yeah. yeah. This, One person here and it just, it spirals. They're like, this person did this for me and they did it in this exact way and they'll do the same for you. Exactly. Right. And I'm and so it, grateful. And, yeah. And, <laughs> and it so goes grateful. like that. And, and you have to be aware when you're running a business that, that things like this happen. And it's like actors who get typecast in roles in movies where they do like a horror film and then they just keep getting asked to do more horror roles or they do an action film and they just keep doing more action films or they do a Mm -hmm. comedy and they just keep doing more comedies, even though they may be great dramatic actors. They don't get the chance to showcase that because everyone sees them in a certain way. Yeah. 
Well, here's the deal. If you need some utmost confidentiality, let me know. (laughs) (laughs) I'm your girl for that. I'm booked out about a year, but get on the list. (laughs) Be happy to help. Anyways. So another thing about what you need to know before hiring in, in a marketing agency is I think this is really important, especially if you're just getting started. Know what is being outsourced or what's happening in house. Okay. This is huge. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's, big. it's massive because if, if you're paying like a premium, but they're outsourcing it to India or wherever, you want to be aware of what's happening there. It's really important just to see the quality of work, right? It's so easy for someone to be a great salesperson and then outsource everything and give you mediocre work. I'm not saying people that get hired from, Other countries are doing mediocre work. That's not what I'm saying, but it's just the fact that you need to be aware of what's happening every step of the way or whoever you appoint to know what's going on. Okay. Because I can't tell you how many times people come to me and say, oh, we hired so-and-so from, you know, the Philippines and they sent us 5,000 likes to our Facebook page, but no one's engaging. Okay. Well, that was all click farm. You know, that's not real people. It's not people that are engaging with your audience. So just be very aware of if things are being outsourced, if it's being done in-house, and that will give you a gauge as to what people are actually doing with your brand and your business. And it will help you greatly in making that final decision if that company is right for you and your business needs. Yeah. And I've heard of companies in the book industry, what they'll do, because you know we don't do this, all of our people are in the US because when you're writing books, you need people who actually speak English as a first language. They have to, yeah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) What they'll do is they'll build these teams of people who English isn't their first language. And then those people will go and write the books for them. They'll get these books back and then it won't read properly. Right. And then the client will get in and be like frustrated. Like, this is not what my book of is course. supposed to be. Yeah. And they're like, you know, well, you know, that's why you only paid what $3,000 for your book. Right. That's why it was so cheap. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Right. You yeah. know, I've got to tell you, this is a little off topic, but I got to tell you last week, one of my clients asked me about how to write a book. And of course I said, well, you got to talk to Rory and they said, well, how do you write your book? Like ghostwriter? Cause the content's super good. So I'm assuming you hired a ghostwriter. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I did not hire a ghostwriter. Rory painstakingly called me every Tuesday and recorded me talking for hours. And that is how the book got written. I just, you know, verbally explained what I wanted people to know. And then it got transcribed. Then the editing process took forever. That's what took the most time was the editing process. So for those of you who want to write a book, don't think you have to sit down and just like start typing. You can, if that's how you do things. But for me, I needed to just talk and Rory asked me the right questions and it just came out and then it got transcribed. And then we edited and edited. Thanks, Carly. (laughs) Edited and edited and edited some more. So if you're thinking about doing a book, just know, like, don't be discouraged because you don't actually have to sit down and write it. It's a common misconception. I feel like people think they have to sit down and do that. No, like everyone has a story within them and you can use that to your advantage to help fuel your business growth. I cannot say that enough. Every single day I I take my calls and someone mentions my book yesterday. I'm on a call with some guy who's like, wow, I've never spoken to an international best-selling author before. And it, it just, again, it's like, it further solidifies like, yeah, awesome. Great. Let's talk about you. You know, like, let's get back to you. If you are feeling like you need to, or want to, I just can't recommend it enough. And I feel like I talk about this every episode, but seriously, like I mean it because <laughs> it's just helped my business grow so much. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> seriously though. It's like a magic pill that grows your business. I don't know. It's amazing. But only when done right. Well, that's the thing only when done right. And when you have the right people to like help support you, like you and your wife and your team, you know, I'm so grateful that I have the book. That's all. Are you glad that I uh, hounded you for years? Yeah. Well, because I thought, you know, I thought the whole book writing process was just like 
crap, I have to sit down. When do I have the time to sit down? And I also, here's another factor. I also was afraid to tell my story, my personal story of like what had happened to me. And I wasn't ready to talk about it. And so that you have to get to a point where you're ready to talk about certain aspects. And Rory had heard my story like a thousand times because of the music that we've done and everything we've shared. Rory and I talk all the time, right? So he's, I mean, talking to him about it was like, sorry, dude, here well, we go again. I, I lived it. Yeah. And you went through it with me. Exactly. <laughs> sorry. So, but all that to say is when you get to the point, for those of you listening, when you get to that point of like, okay, here I am, I'm ready to tell my story. It doesn't have to be this huge thing. It can be a little piece of the bigger picture. And that's actually how we came up with this podcast title. I remember we were talking about my book and I said, hey, we need to come up with a podcast called the Big Picture Business Podcast. And so here we are. So side note, (laughs) write a book. Everyone's got a book in them. Write a book. It'll help fuel everything you're doing. I'm telling you. Okay, let's get back to the topics at hand here. What was this episode? The truth about online marketing. <laughs> the truth is you need a book. The truth is you need a book <laughs> to help fuel, to help fuel your online marketing. Okay. All right. So here's something that I'm passionate about sharing. Okay. Let's talk about the harsh realities of social media marketing. Are you ready for this? You know, that reminds me of that uh, dance song from the nineties. <laughs> is that the one you're talking about or no? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> that like played in front of every basketball, yeah. whatever. It's like, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> God, we're nerds. Okay. All right. So the harsh realities of social. You got to leave that in. That's for the commercial too. <laughs> <laughs> the harsh realities of social media marketing. I'm going to be real honest, guys. Every post you've ever made. Nobody cares. And that's just the sad reality. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but really nobody cares because entertainment wins, right? So if you've got something funny, if you have something that's gossip, that's going to win. That's going to get shares. It's going to get engagements and comments. But if you're posting just day-to-day stuff, that's great because it feeds the algorithm. We love to feed the algorithm but it's not going to go viral. Yeah. Very little of our like business posts. Oh, so get, get much traction in, in the same way. It feeds the algorithm and it's important, but it's not going to be the next thing that goes crazy. It's just not. So be aware of that, right? So when you're making your content calendar and you're building out your social media content, go into it with a grain of salt right? Like content is important. We know that, but just know like it's not likely to get a lot of engagement just because there's so much noise happening online. So consistency is key with social media, but don't be disappointed. Don't be disappointed if something doesn't take off or get comments or likes, whatever you're feeding into the algorithm. And that's what counts, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. And find ways if you can to automate as much of your social media, because there's other things to focus on with growing a business. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's amazing how many hours go in. Like I can speak for myself, right? Like how many hours go into doing Instagram, being a part of these private groups and discussing certain things. And I mean, same for you, Roy, with YouTube, I imagine it's just endless, Mm -hmm. right? You could get, you get caught in a cycle where it's like, oh my gosh, five hours have gone by. Yeah. I mean, very easily. I mean, you could, there's so many studies that have been done on this where you get sucked in to these platforms. And even if you are consciously aware of it, you cannot stop it. Well, yeah, especially because we have smartphones, right? Like you all of a sudden, like I have it right here. You get, you get this thing in your pocket and you're like, what's happened in the last five seconds? Let me see. Did somebody yeah. comment? What's no, happened? I mean the, the average, I think it's the average, uh, millennial, uh, well, you know, or whatever the average person checks their phone, something like 500 times a day. Yeah. It's worse than smoking. You understand that? Like owning one of these things is technically worse than smoking just because of how often you're checking. And I try so hard every day to like leave my phone in the kitchen at night, things like that. I'm like, I don't need to check it at night. 
But of course, like my hands literally are like looking for it. Like, oh, it's not there. It's weird. I think we all just have, it's like an extra appendage, like looking for the smartphone that's totally owning us. So, but but like Rory is saying, like, just be careful of how often you're checking things and think about how much time you spend on your phone that could be going towards other things. Right. Is that what you, what you were talking about? Yeah. And a lot of times there's other things you can be doing in your business that are going to lead to growing your business a lot more than just posting on social media results. Yeah. Yeah. Actual like real results. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10. Yeah. Right. So like listening to this podcast, you have like uh, either one of us could grow a business without doing any social media. Well, we did. Exactly. But (laughs) even, even nowadays, like even with social media being much bigger than when we started our businesses, we could do it without social media. Mm -hmm. But part of that is just because there's so much of these ideas that social media is the way that you grow a business these days, but it's not necessary. Well, it's not necessary for sales. Like what I tell my clients a lot is like, if you're going to post on social media, don't sell influence. And what I mean by that is like, don't become an influencer. Okay. But engage like, influence positive things, engage with other brands and people and say hello and be involved. And if people are commenting on your photos and your posts, say, thank you, you know, like show people you're human. It doesn't have to be a sales platform. You know, there's plenty of big companies out there that aren't selling their wares. Coca-Cola is a great example. It's a huge brand, obviously one of the biggest in the world, but they're not selling Coca-Cola online you know, not to individuals. They're just saying, Hey, check us out. Happy holidays. And people are engaging. Right. Yeah. But, and, and the other thing is batching, Yes. Like, you know, and that's what I was trying to get at is like, when you are putting your content together, create as much content in one period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to spend one day a month on it, create all your content, that's going to be for the month in that one day, automate it so that it all, it is all scheduled or hire someone if you can Mm -hmm. to, if you can't automate it through systems to post it for you yeah, so that you're not focused on that. Yeah. And then you spend the other 29 days in the month focusing on things that actually lead to income in your business. Yes. Yeah. Cannot agree more. When Rory says automate, please don't use something like Hootsuite. Shout out to Hootsuite. Your service is great. I understand what you're trying to do, but I'm telling you right now, when people see that uh, stamp that says Hootsuite on it. It's so disingenuous to your followers. I'm telling you, hire someone that's going to do it for you where it doesn't have that watermark on it or whatever that says posted by blah, blah, blah. Like get someone that's real. That's going to do it on your behalf because it just feels so lame when I see posts like that. In fact, I just scroll past it. I don't want to read that. Someone planned that a month ago, whether you did or not, I don't want to see it. So there's something about that. Just continue to strive for authenticity when it comes to posting on social media. And, and just to add on to that very yeah. quickly, yeah. Uh, also be aware of what goes out so that if you Gosh. did something that becomes not relevant mm-hmm. as part of that, say, you know, some, something big, massive thing happened yeah. th- like three weeks into your cycle that mm-hmm. you have to stop, make sure you stop it. Yeah. A really good example of that. And this is going to age both of us, but I remember hearing a story from my client that uh, talked about how he actually opened up his storefront first, first location on 9-11, the morning of 9-11. And this was obviously before automations were even like invented and big social media platforms were happening, but he had sent out an email to his like loyal followers saying, everything's open. This is great. But at the time there was an automated email system like a super nuts, you know, nut and bolt kind of thing, right. nitty gritty, where he sent that out the morning of 9-11 and didn't even follow up because of what had happened. And everyone was just like an awe shock. And it took a really big toll on his business because of that, obviously, right? It's like, it shows just this huge, like a non-sensitive, like how dare you not pay attention to current events and what's happening. So yeah, all, all that to say is just be like Rory is saying, just be really um, aware of what is happening around you and Make appropriate posts according to that. Something else that I feel is important to mention, which is horrible, so bear with me here, but it's true, is that the vast majority of people who follow you, who say that they love you, are waiting for you to fail. 
Okay. People are waiting for you to fail because they love gossip. They love to see what's next. They love to see how you're going to come back from stuff. And a, a good example of that, I hate to say good example, but an example of that happened over Valentine's Day weekend, just a couple of days ago. I have to give a shout out to Farm Girl Flowers. I sent Farm Girl Flowers to my mom for Valentine's Day. One of my favorite companies of all time. Their flowers are stunning. Always arrived on time. Always beautiful. Always have extras involved. Like great company. I, I even sent some to your wife, Rory. Just they're, they're beautiful flowers. Yep. And the owner, who's lovely, got on social media on live and explained that due to the ice storms that were happening, they you know very delayed shipping, and the orders that got sent out that actually did, you know, arrive to their destination, you know, arrived frozen or completely ruined or whatever, right? Like flowers are temperamental. And you would think that her following of millions would be supportive and say, no problem. We still love you. She gave, you know, refunds to everybody. She made sure to make things right. And even then people were just crapping all over her saying, how dare you? How dare you not have a backup plan? How dare you not give me a refund within the first 12 hours? And it just seeing those comments from an entrepreneurial standpoint, from a business owner standpoint, broke my heart. And she still got on live the last three days and apologized. It's like, what more do you want from people? But people are waiting to watch you fail. And this was a classic example of that. So the best you can do is hold your head high like the owner of Farm Girl Flowers and say, hey, did the best we could. We're going to refund everybody. We're also going to send flowers when we can. You know, please continue to support us if you'd like. But still, that is not enough. And I guarantee that she has lost so much business because of this happening. It's like a, it's a natural disaster. It's not like she had control over this, right? And people still crap on other people. So just be aware if that, if something like that happens to you, head high, big smile and go, whatever, because the people that really see you are still going to buy your product or still going to order whatever you have. You know, like I am a farm girl flower believer. I will order flowers from her and her company for the next 15 years, however long she's in business. But it's just, it just sucks seeing people get crapped on like that. Really hurts my heart. Like truly thinking about it, it sucks. I really like her. I want to hug her. (laughs) <laughs> just because I know how hard that stuff is, you know? Yeah. Oh, and then the last thing I want to mention on harsh realities of social media marketing is content will rarely go viral. So if you're waiting for something to go viral, stop waiting, just stop and put out quality. Quality engagement will win. And that is what you need to know. Yeah. Just, and be consistent. Just if you're going to put out content, just put it out, be consistent and continue to grow with the followers that you have. Yep. Exactly. Hey, Rory, tell me why does 95% of all the people who take online marketing courses get zero results? There's so many reasons. <laughs> okay. So what happens is that the gurus, they, uh, they create these courses and they, they say, oh, all you have to do is take my course and you're going to build a, an online business and you're going to be super, super successful. Just like I was. Have you heard that one before? Yeah. Have you, how many courses have you bought saying that, right? It becomes an addiction because what ends up happening is people go from one guru to another guru who say the same thing over and over again. And the gurus know this and they know that, that their courses aren't going to get any results. In fact, a lot of them actually stated on their websites that you're not going to get any of the results that, that, that they get. And in fact, some of them will flat out say that 95% of people will get little to no results buying their courses. Yeah. We actually looked at a website right before getting on this podcast where Rory was like, you got to see this. And we (laughs) scrolled all the way down to the footer. And what did it say? It was like testimonial. What did it say? Testimonial full disclosure or something like that. Yeah. 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 And it literally said like, here's what people are doing with their results or not doing with the results from taking the course. And it was shocking, but their marketing materials don't change. It's the same. It's clickbait. Right. Yeah. It was basically like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to continue to show only the good testimonials. We're not showing any of the people who don't get results. Yeah. And here's what we believe are the numbers. And basically what it came down to is that only 5% of people get any results at all. And really only about 1% of people in general are getting superior results. 
And in those cases, I don't believe it's just the lack of implementation. I really don't. I think it's just super shady people, super swarmy people coming in and saying, you can be just like me. And just like me, air quotes, who knows what that person has done or not done? We haven't seen their bank account. We don't know. How easy would it be, Rory, for you and I to like go rent a private jet and sit in it? for the day (laughs) or to go get a Lamborghini and drive 20 feet down the road. You know what I mean? Like I, I see these things and I laugh again. I laugh out loud. So I'm like, dude, I don't need to see your quote unquote fancy crap because who knows if that's real. I'm like the frugal business owner, right? I'm big on like money in the bank (laughs) and keeping it there. You know, like the more wealth I accumulate, I want to go so under the radar. I don't want anyone to know about my stuff. Right. (laughs) So yeah, it's a really gross world. And these people are getting rich off of people's hopes and dreams. And it's sad. It's just so yeah. And there's different levels, right? Like, so someone can live in Texas and have an 8,000 square foot home for like 400, $500,000 where, you know, and they're trying to sell a lifestyle of like they live they have, they're living large right <laughs> if you you go try buy that in, in San Francisco and oh, that's 20 it. million or whatever yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that that's the thing they're they're doing their whole social media video in Dallas and then you know cut to San Diego and you're like no yeah that's not happening i know <laughs> right and i'm not saying that every person's like this right it's not like that but there are a lot and what ends up happening is you get a couple of people who are actually doing well and are teaching some of these strategies and everyone is trying to model them. Yeah. Right. And then it it creates this cycle of, well, all they see is that the only way that I can market is to do this lifestyle marketing. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to go and I've got to have the Lamborghini and I've got to sell the lifestyle And then I've got to sell this fake lifestyle that I don't actually have to get more people to buy from me. And then I've got to sell this course (laughs) of how I, I made my lifestyle of being a guru and it just perpetuates itself. And then they get a bunch of followers who do the same thing and it just goes on and on. You have all these fake gurus. Yeah. So then the information that they're selling becomes useless because they're all teaching the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And there's no real information that can be implemented about growing a business because they're all basing it on what they're seeing a couple of people who are at another level in their business doing because they know those people are doing it because they know it sells. Right. They right? get you into this buying state. They get you yeah. into this purchase mindset where it's like, oh, this is a no brainer. I love this person's lifestyle. I want to be a part of it. And they know that they're going to hook you. And they know that you're not going to get any results. So let's talk about the psychology of what they're doing now. Okay. So what they're doing, and and this happens in a lot of webinars. And I bet if if you guys have been paying attention, you've been watching webinars Mm -hmm. um, anytime in the last probably 10 years that you've watched a webinar or you've seen some of these videos on YouTube where, where people are, you know, on Instagram, where people are like being influencers and living the lifestyle, Mm -hmm. Uh, what they're doing, they are selling you this idea of something that you are supposed to live. Now, what they're doing is they're saying, this is my lifestyle. Wouldn't it be great if you had this lifestyle? And what they're saying is now they're getting you to say, and now wouldn't it be great if you had this and you start imagining yourself having that as soon as you start imagining yourself having it, it puts you into a buying mindset for whatever they're going to sell you later. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's only one of the small psychological triggers that they use in, yeah. in these types of buying situations. There's so many of them that mm-hmm. you can't even comprehend what it is they are doing, but there's like psychological trigger after psychological trigger. But I want you to realize that when someone is selling you that lifestyle, that this is, you know, this is my Lamborghini and I, I made millions of dollars doing this. And this is my mansion on the beach in San Diego or whatever, you know, we're choosing San Diego because that's where so many of the quote I know. gurus I know. I know. Ended, up, <laughs> ended up living, right? <laughs> but it could be anywhere. But when you're seeing this, just be aware that they are putting you into that mindset mm-hmm. so that you will buy from them. Yeah. 
So I want you to step back and say they are trying to sell me. Can I add to that really quick? Yes. I will say that it's not like it's a bad thing every time. It's just for you to be aware that they are going to upsell you. They're going to try to figure out a way to get more money out of you. But if you see something of value where you're like, you know what? I kind of want to learn that. Then go for it, but make sure you're implementing as you go along. Don't fall into this trap that so many of Rory's and my clients go through where it's just this never ending cycle of course after course, and they have nothing to show for it except a ton of cash they've invested for nothing. Well, I've had clients arrive at, you know, my quote unquote doorstep, having spent, you know, you know, a quarter of a million dollars, half a million dollars on stuff before getting to work with me. And they go, I've spent all this money and I have nothing to show for it. Yeah. It's really sad. And then we sit down, we map out a game plan. Mm -hmm. We say, this is what we're going to do. We are going to build assets for your business. We're going to implement and create results in your business. And that's when things shift and change for them. That's when we get the success stories Mm -hmm. for their business and for their lives. So if you're looking for changes to happen in in your life. You have to be aware that you can't just keep buying more and more courses. Information's great, but without the implementation and even with you taking in that information, most of these courses aren't even designed to implement the information. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. So you can get the course, but you don't even know how to implement it. I I can't tell you how many courses I've, I've taken myself where I've actually, because I am a very stubborn. And I will sit there and go through it and try and implement it. And you implement it and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The information just does not work. It does not get results. (laughs) There's been so many times Rory's called me up and been like, so I found a flaw in this course and I emailed them and told them how to fix their own course. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. That is one very clear way to help you grow with your own marketing efforts is to obviously take action, implement like we talk about, but just change your mindset and be really aware of what you're getting invested in. Invest in in mentors who are going to help you implement, help you get past the blocks because there's blocks in mental, in our own mental blocks that we have to get through, but there's blocks in the information that we have to get through that you just may not know. And they'll help you get through that a lot quicker mm-hmm. than taking any course out there. Yeah. The other side of it, <coughs> sorry, I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> You're my mentor. Don't die on me now. I still need you. <laughs> <laughs> Never rely on purchasing something like a course to help make you successful. Okay, invest in, in mentors, invest in, in implementation, invest in people that are going to help move you toward getting the results and building assets in your business. That's the stuff that is going to lead to your success. Absolutely. And focus on what you can accomplish, what you can master. And eventually everything will come together, right? Like work with what you have. So that's the truth about online marketing. Some of it's great. Some of it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, here we are. But that's the expose. And, you know, we wanted to just kind of rip off the bandaid and show you guys a little bit behind the scenes and and give you some of the insights into 20 years worth of experience of us doing this and the stuff that you just may not see. All right, guys. And with that, see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> On the next episode, we speak with Lindsay Wander, who is the founder of Worldwise Tutoring. With so many of us business owners stuck at home having to run our businesses and teach our kids at the same time, she has some great strategies for at-home learning, executive functioning, and how to use tutors to fill in our blind spots. Now, not only that, but she shares her own business strategies and how she went from a biomedical engineer to an educator to a business owner. You definitely want to check it out and you definitely want to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. You know why? Because you're awesome and awesome people leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts. That's why. So keep being awesome and we will see you in the next one.